If you enjoy food with a lot of flavor, but you also want permanent sustainable fat loss, then today's cooking video is for you. I'm Dorothy, and today we're sauteing up some Swiss chard with enhanced with some tomato vinegar and have eggs nested into the sauteed greens. Sound good? It is. Sound low carb? It's that too. I'm sweating in the tomato greenhouse because I want to show you the type of heirloom tomato that we use in making the um, tomato vinegar that we're going to use in the Swiss chard. It's um, an heirloom tomato, it's green right now, um, and it's called uh, Opalka. And it's an heirloom tomato that's very meaty, very robust, and has just great flavor. We smoke it on the farm, we put it in tomato jam and tomato vinegar and of course Bloody Marys and uh, some tomato martinis too. But for now, since these are green, we're going to use some of the smoked tomato vinegar that we did last year and use it to make up the Swiss chard with the greens and the nested eggs. So on to the kitchen. Okay, first up is to sharpen our knives. In my mind, there are two really important and critical things to knife skills. The first is to start with a sharp knife, and the second is to select a knife that fits your hand. These are much more important than the brand or the expense of the knife that you get, in my humble opinion, of course. Here is what Swiss chard looks like for those of you that aren't familiar. This bunch came from the regular grocery store in July. Swiss chard is the mildest and sweetest of all of the leafy greens, but you do need to remove the rib. Once the rib is removed, then the greens themselves will cook just like spinach. They will cook down, unlike collards and kale. Now, don't get rid of those ribs though. They actually taste wonderful. They just cook a little bit differently than the greens. So chop them up into a small dice similar to the way you would chop celery. And we can use them in this dish or we can use them later in a different dish. Just don't toss them. Once you've diced them up with your very sharp knife, just put them in a bowl and set them aside for a few minutes. Now to the leafy green part. I just bunch it all up and coarsely chop it. You can chop it smaller if you want to keep it in bite-sized pieces or you can um, leave it fuller if you don't mind. Sometimes people don't like the stringiness of when it's um, more full, so I just coarsely chop it. A little note of interest while chopping away. In Southern Italy, greens are a daily addition to meals. Although I'd take a pass on the collards and kale, I could make Swiss chard a daily addition. Onward to the mise en place, aka a prepped ingredient list. We've got the chard, the stems and the greens, one large onion chopped up, two or three garlic cloves minced up, smoked tomato vinegar, and olive oil, more on that later. Your spice of choice, mild, medium, hot, and very hot. And hiding under the spices, I have some organic Kerrygold butter, unsalted. And don't forget the three eggs. All right, now to the stove. Medium-high heat, a nonstick pan, a little bit of olive oil. I usually use about two tablespoons. Quick note on olive oil. If you're cooking over high heat, use refined olive oil. Extra virgin will turn rancid. Okay, add your onions and get them started caramelizing. There's nothing better than a caramelized onion as far as I'm concerned. And then once they've cooked for a couple minutes, add your uh, charred stems. And because they are thicker, they're gonna need a little bit more time than the greens. Caramelize them up with the onions for about five minutes. Just stir it occasionally. I keep this over medium and it may take up to 10 minutes before they're up completely caramelized. Add the garlic towards the end. Garlic burns really easily, so only add it for 30 seconds to a minute. Next, blend in your salt and some spice. 
It's your preference as to how spicy you want it. I put in smoked paprika to this batch. Sometimes I feel a little spicier and I'll put in a hotter spice. Now, in batches, add your leafy greens. They don't take very long to cook down. So um, add about a third to a half of what you've cut up and cook it down a little bit. Gently mix it in with the onions, the caramelized onions and the stems below. Now when it looks about like this, add your second batch and cook that down for a few more minutes, blending all the time. Now I'm going to add some tomato, smoked tomato vinegar. This tomato vinegar is a special enhancement and if you want it, you can buy it at um, heathglen.com. But you can just add regular apple cider vinegar to up the acid content a bit also. Okay, after a couple minutes, everything is blended, the greens are cooked down, and it's time to nest the eggs. You can make little pockets in the greens, or you can just um, put the eggs right on top. Crack them and hold them close to the skillet so that the yolks don't break. And here's a little pocket, just in case you want to do it that way. And then crack them right into the greens. I probably could have fit four eggs in here, but you go with what you've got. So now we're going to cover it and uh, watch them. Pull up the cover every once in a while and, and see that the eggs get to the consistency that you like. I like my eggs yolks a little bit runny. This looks just about perfect to me. And now a little more salt and the final test eating something healthy and delicious, and look at those yolks. Now this is what I call a perfect meal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And there you go, a non-boring way to have all of those wonderful nutrients that come in greens, and of course, the eggs. If you want to get even more protein in this dish, you can add smoked pork or bacon, um, if you're a meat eater. And that gets it closer to a, a dish known, an African-American dish that's often called low gravy. But for today, we're using the smoked tomato vinegar in our tomato martini. Um, and guess what the toast is going to be? Bet you can't guess. Let us toast to greens. Mm. I think I might have to have two of these.